guys. So we're back with another quant webinar. We're going to discuss exponents today. So how this came about is that uh, there were quite a few questions that were asked uh, by learners. And they wanted to understand how to think of a solution, not just what the solution is, because that is easily available. But, you know, how do you think through? How do you get to what you have to do in the question? So then, of course, it's much easier to show rather than write down, etc. So then I just decided to put them all together in our today's webinar. Um, so th then the uh, source of the questions um, is uh, there are going to be multiple sources. There are some questions which are from our own uh, ANA prep curriculum. There are some which are official questions. Some are from GMAT club, etc. So we'll take a look at all of them. Now, before we begin working on the questions, uh, I'm going to tell you quickly about what exponents are. You know, just give you a rough idea. So uh, think of uh, exponents as a shorthand of multiplication, right? Let me just share my screen and then we'll quickly discuss the basic properties that you have to keep in mind every time you get an exponents question. So let's see. So here is my whiteboard. All right, so what are exponents? As I said, think of them as a shorthand for multiplication. So for example, in case I have to write, in case I have two to the power of five given to me, fine, I can write this as two into two into two into two into two. Essentially, this is what the exponent is, right? To the power of five means that two is multiplied with itself five times. And this is still doable. But then think about it, if I had to write two to the power of 55, then of course it becomes unmanageable. And that is the reason why we needed this. Right? We needed a shorthand for it. All right. Now always keep in mind that this is multiplication that we're talking about. So then it will be so much easier for you to learn up those rules that we have of exponents. So when we say, uh, all right, so x to the power m into x to the power n, we say that this is equal to x to the power m plus n. Don't try to learn up these formulas, right? Try to think of very simple examples. For example, in case I'm a little confused, what do I have to do? I would say this is two square into two q. What is that equal to? That is equal to two to the power five. And if I'm still confused, I would say this is two into two into two into two into two. So essentially this is two into two. So excuse me, this is two into two into two, right? So this is how I get two to the power five. All right. So then when the uh, terms are multiplied then and the bases are the same, then the exponents get added. When the terms are divided, for example, and the bases are the same, then this gets um, uh, subtracted. I'll have three minus two over here. I know that in case I have a two square and the whole thing is to the power three, then the two will, will get multiplied, two into three, right? Two to the power zero. Excuse me, I know is one. So anything to the power zero is one, but zero to the power zero is not defined, right? Um, well, let's call it not defined. And then I also know how to handle negative exponents simply. So if I have, let's say, two to the power minus four, this is equal to one upon two to the power four, right? Now, these are some very basic properties of exponents that I'm sure that you're comfortable with. Now, let's look at one more important thing over here. Um, how are various exponents of a number placed on the number line? So let's put them on the number line. For example, if I have zero over here, right? And I have one over here. I have two over here. This is my number line. I'm just plotting my number line. I have three here, then I have four here, etc. Now one is two to the power zero. Your two is two to the power one. Your four is two to the power two. Then next you have at eight, you have two to the power three. Look at that. Look at what is happening. Look. So my two to the power zero is one. And when I multiply this with two, another two, because what is two to the power one? It is nothing but two into two to the power zero, which is two to the power zero is simply one, right? Basically, I'm multiplying the whole thing by another two. So whatever was the distance of this two to the power zero from zero, that becomes double because I'm multiplying it by another two over here to get the next exponent. So then this becomes two to the power one, right? The distance from here to here gets doubled. And now 
Here is where my 2 to the power 1 lies. What happens with 2 to the power 2? Again, my distance of, let's say, 2 to the power 1 is this much. And when I multiply it with another 2 to get 2 to the power 2, I have another of the same distance and I get 2 to the power 2. Right? So basically, this distance is going to be equal to this distance. So your next exponent is going to be as far away from the previous one as the previous one is from 0. Right? Makes sense? All right. Look at this, 2 to the power 2. Here, this is my 4, right? 2 to the power 2. My next exponent is 2 cubed, so I'll multiply it with another 2. So then the same distance is given once again. And that is why my I get my 8, 2 cubed. This is another 4 away from 0, right? 2 to the power 2 is 4 away from 0, and 2 to the power 3 is another 4 away from 0. So it is at 8. Right? So this is how we have, this is how the exponents are placed on the number line. Now, this is how all exponents are placed on the number line. Let's take the case of 3, for example. My 0 is over here and I have my 1. Again, this is going to be my 3 to the power 0. As I said, anything to the power 0 is always going to give me 1. Right? So then I have 3 to the power 0 and that is 1. Next, I have a 2 here and I have a 3 here and I have a 4 here and etc. So here is my 3 to the power 1. I have 1 here. I multiply to get 3 to the power 1. I multiply my 1 with a 3. So 3 to the power 1 is essentially 3 into 3 to the power 0, which is the same as 1. doesn't matter. So whatever this distance was, it became thrice. So I added this particular distance twice more. So I added it here and I added it once more. And that is how I got 3 to the power 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, now stay with me. 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So here is my 9. I say this is my 3 square. Mm -hmm. So then here is my 3 to the power 1, which is a distance of 3. When I multiply this with another 3 and I get 3 square because 3 square is 3 into 3 to the power 1. So then this, whatever this distance was, it, it's this red region, right? Whatever this, this is the distance 3 to the power 1. It became 3 times. It didn't increase three by 3 times. It became 3 times. So it increased by 2 more times. Then I got the same distance here. Then and I got the same distance here. And that is how I got square that is 9 right so this is how the exponents are placed on the number line now keep this in mind as we keep going to you know the distance between the exponents do you see it will keep increasing next I'll have 27 that will be further down right of course because it is getting multiplied by 3 every time what if it is 4 it will get multiplied by 4 every time so my next exponent will be even farther away I, I'll have to add that previous distance three more times. Then five. Again, I'll have to add the previous distance four more times, etc. Right? So this is how various exponents are placed on the number line. This is going to be uh, useful in some of the questions. But, uh, you know, you, sh you should understand this very well, the way they are placed on the number line. Okay, now we'll uh, start with a question. I'll share a question with you. This is a relatively simple question. It's an official question. So try it out. Here we go. So check out this. Try to do this.
Okay, I see some correct answers coming up. That is great. Another 30 seconds. Right. Let's do it together now. The value of, and there is this one big expression, is how many times the value of this. Okay. You know, when terms with exponents are added or subtracted, we've discussed this in the module also, that there is only one thing we can do. And what is that? We can take things common, right? So if I have 2 cubed plus 2 to the power 4, there is nothing that I can do here. This is certainly not equal to 2 to the power 3 plus 4, 3 into nothing. Absolutely nothing we can do here, right? The only thing that we can do is take something common, right? We've discussed this, that this should be 2 cube. I can, you know, whatever is the smallest exponent, I'll take that common. This becomes 1 plus 2. And now this is easy to calculate. This is, this, you know, is just a 2 cube. This could be really, really huge. For example, if there's the 31 here, and let's say if there is a 34 here, then if I take 2 to the power 31 common, then what do I 1 plus? I get 2 cube over here. This I know is easier to calculate. I get a 9 into 2 to the power 31. Of course, I'll not be asked to you know, find the actual value of 2 to the power 31. That doesn't work, of course. So something like this. Whenever we have an addition or a subtraction between the terms. All right. Now, we have an addition between the terms. So that is great. We know what to do. But then we have negative exponents over here. And that becomes a little tricky. What do we do when we have negative exponents? Look, now... We know how to deal with negative exponents. In case we have, let's say, 2 to the power minus 30, we can just write in 1 upon 2 to the power 30, right? But this makes it really long. I mean, we'll have to convert each one of them, write them down, then take common, etc. That is not required, right? We go with the same logic. Over here, we said that if it is 2 to the power 30 and 1 plus 2 to the power 34, we'll take 2 to the power 31 common. It's the smaller uh, exponent, right? Just we'll just use the same logic, right? Look, I say that I can take two to the power minus seventeen common from all these terms. If I do that, what am I left over here at the first term? I'm left with a two cube. Why? Because when I'll multiply this, when I if I open it, of course, as in the the expression should not change, right? The value should stay the same. So whatever manipulations I make, the value of the expression should not change. So if I take 2 to the power minus 17 common, I'm left with a 2 cube inside. Why? Because if I open this back up, I'll get 2 to the power minus 17. This is into 2 cube, which means I'll add the 3 over here. Because what is this? This is nothing but 2 to the power minus 17 into 2 cube, right? which is going to add the exponents. And this will give me back the 2 to the power minus 40. Simple as that. And that is why I can say that if I take 2 to the power minus 17, the smallest exponent, negative, negative so minus 17 is the smallest one. I take that common, I'm left with a 2 cube over here. Nothing, the, the value of the expression has not changed. Then the same logic, this will give me 2 squared. Same logic, this will give me 2 and this will give me 1. But of course, right? This whole thing divided by 5. Okay, these are simple. We know how to solve these. This is 8 plus 4, 12 plus 2, 14 and 1, 15. That's it. So what do I get? I get 2 to the power minus 17 into 15 upon 5. And this gets cancelled and I get a 3. So the value of this entire thing is how many times the value of 2 to the power minus 17? It is 3 times. Does that make sense? Yeah. Look, we can certainly do it in that way also. 1 upon 2 to the power 14 plus 1 upon 2 to the power 15 plus 1 upon blah, blah. And then we'll take 1 upon 2 to the power 14 common over here. 1 plus 1 upon 2. 
Do you see how long the calculation becomes in that case? And we have to write down so much in that case, right? Over here, I'm simply taking out 2 to the power minus 70, and I know 2 cube is left. You know, when you do it like a couple of times, you'll get the hang of it. Minus 17 plus what will give me minus 14? I know it's a 3. Right. So, and then this calculation is all oral. This we have nothing. Right. And then we just add it up, divide by 5. We know it's 3 and then answer is going to be C in that case. Make sense? Right. It becomes so much faster if we do it like this.